Hey everybody, it's Allie, and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, September 19th. It's really been an exciting week in YNR. We had Chance's death, the very emotional funeral, and finally, the revelation that he is still alive. I had some suspicions last week that this was all part of the, the plan to bust the bad cops. Of course, I didn't vocalize any of that. <laughs> but I had it in the back of my head um, that it was still, there was still a possibility that he might still be alive. Um, and as this week wore on, it definitely started to become clear that that's what we were working up to, a great shocking revelation. I wasn't expecting to ever see Chance again, though. I thought maybe, you know, they're, they're just kind of leaving the door open for a possible return in the future, but I knew that the actor was leaving the show, so um, I kind of figured that that was it and we were done seeing him. Um, so, Definitely the way <laughs> that they revealed, you know, the whole thing was very surprising to me. Um, driving Nina and Philip out into the middle of nowhere and then, you know, revealing the truth um, under a veil of darkness that Chance is in fact still alive and um, that unfortunately he's going to be in uh, witness protection for possibly the rest of his life. It was a really good end to the storyline, I felt. Um, as you know, I had been pretty bored in general with the whole cop storyline for months, I would have to say, um, but it, it was really, really worth you know, all of the boredom for the payoff that we got this week because it was very exciting. This week has like been an emotional roller coaster and I was glued to the screen <laughs> for all of it. Um, so let's talk about Chance's funeral, aka the black party, because just because it's a funeral doesn't mean that we can't notice fashion because Chloe looked uh, she looked like very fashion. She had her veil and her kind of crunchy skirted dress. Um, I honestly, I don't know about you guys, but I was crying buckets of tears <laughs> throughout the funeral. I didn't even like Chance that much toward the end, but I was bawling the whole time. I really wish I could have a video camera watching me watch the show. <laughs> as I cry into my pillow at midnight for a character that I didn't really even like. But it just had that, you know, so much emotion. And Nina was like a beautiful steel magnolia, you know? I could jog all the way to Texas and back, but my daughter can't, and I want to know why! <laughs> it was very that. Um, I, I, for, first of all, why did Trisha Cast ever leave the show in the first place? Because she's wonderful, isn't she? I mean, I have just enjoyed her so much these past few weeks. I truly felt what she was going through, you know, every step of the way and all of the emotions that she showed right on her face and just the way that she played it. I was right there with her the entire time. Um, Tracy should have been there, you know? I felt like Tracy should have been at the funeral to help, uh, to help Nina through that. Or maybe Sharon, you know, someone else who had lost a child. I would have liked to have seen that element to it, but all in all, I really loved it. Um, you know, it was it was really hard. It's, it's it wasn't funny. You know, I'm I'm making it funny now, but it actually was very sad. Um, you know, nobody should have to bury their own child. And um, I really, you know, I felt her in that moment. And I'm sorry for anybody out there who has had that experience and who was watching the show this week. I'm sure that was very difficult to watch um, for anyone, uh, you know, who has had that happen to them. Because in reality, goodbye is goodbye. You know, so it it was a, a very emotional week, but it was truly like watching a miracle when Nina found out that, you know, her son was still alive and that, you know, her hope was fulfilled. And, and that was a wonderful moment. Um, I really hated the tension that it was causing, too, between um, Nina and 
Paul and Chris. You know, it was very hard to watch these two longtime friends and knowing that that Chris uh, had been involved and she had more information than she could share with with Nina. It was it was very hard to watch all that tension building between the two friends. And it really it was Chris's reaction to the whole thing that kind of tipped me off that Chance was still alive because I knew that Chris would never ever hurt Nina on purpose. I mean, they are, you know, the best of friends. It's unfortunate that Chloe, I guess, will not be able to learn the truth that Chance is still alive, unless she guesses it, which, you know, Chloe's the one that put two and two together about Ronan, so I wouldn't be surprised if she guesses uh, that, that Chance is still alive and just kind of keeps it under her hat. Heather will be fine. Uh, Heather ended up with a promotion out of this entire thing. Hooray! So, um, she'll be fine, but I think, um, you know, Chloe is pretty much a wreck at this point, and it's been hard to watch her go through her process, and especially at the funeral, the confrontation with Heather, um, just, you know, feeling cheated on so many levels, you know, cheated by the fact you know, that she was cheated on by chance with Heather, and, uh, you know, cheated on, on having lost somebody that she really connected with for the first time. So it's been difficult to watch that, and I think that, um, it's going to cause some interesting tension between Ronan and Chloe because, um, as you know, Chloe said every time now that she looks at Ronan, all she sees is the man that you know shot Chance. So that should make for you know some good dynamics, some good scenes, I think, between uh, Chloe and Ronan in the future. You know, all in all, I think that um, it was a really good week. I really, I really have enjoyed this past, um, the, the wrapping up of the storyline, you know, as, as, you know, we all kind of mourned for Chance's death, what we thought was Chance's death, and, um, I think we, I think we settled on an important moral, uh, that, that the show really made a point of stressing, and I appreciated that, and that is, um, never take your loved ones for granted, you know, because in reality, we rarely get a second chance. I am really sensitive about Catherine's health, and if anything happened to her, I would freak out. You need to know this in advance. If something happens to Catherine, I will lose it. So seeing her in the hospital this week was really hard for me. I don't know if it was hard for you guys, but it's, it was difficult to watch somebody who's so strong um, in a position of being so weak. and. Um, it seemed like, though, the entire Catherine health scare thing served as a platform for she and Murphy to have a discussion about end-of-life care, which is a really touchy subject. Um, I personally am very sensitive about the idea of health care rationing, so I was watching really carefully to see how YNR was handling this, because I don't like to have, you know, political views kind of interjected into the storyline in a way that's aggressive, you know? So I was watching very closely to see how they handled it. And I actually appreciated that it was a very balanced discussion. I was I was getting ready. I was like, oh, if they're going to try to, you know, push some kind of agenda here, I'm going to talk about it. But I appreciated that it was very balanced because ultimately both Murphy and Catherine made really good points. Um, Catherine argued that she does not want to be kept alive if it means that she can't have the quality of life that she wants, which is a very ba valid point. And Murphy also, with a very valid point, argued um, that he wants to have everything done that can possibly be done for him, for him and his family and his wife. Um, and, you know, really, I liked that the whole thing kind of ended on a neutral note, uh, because really, that's a decision that has to be made by every individual. You know, it's a personal preference. Healthcare is a personal preference, and it should be made by a person and their family, not by a hospital, not by the state. So, I just love the, the, the entire fact that we got to see more Murphy out of it, to be honest with you. Uh, I loved seeing more Murphy this week. I loved that he was protective of Catherine as she was going through this, and he had no problem whatsoever putting Tucker into his place, and I liked that. I really did feel bad for Tucker, uh, you know, feeling like he was being pushed 
to the outside of the family when he is a part of the family. You know, that it was I felt bad for him, you know, feeling that way during the crisis. But I also understand why Murphy and Brock, who also it was a joy to see Brock this week. I, I do love Brock. Uh, I, I understand why Murphy and Brock were leery of him. I mean, Tucker is a manipulative man, and he did take major advantage of Catherine not even a year ago. So they have every right, I think, to be suspicious of him. I do want to see the family give him a chance, you know, to be a good man. But that also means that Tucker is going to have to step up and prove that he can do it. Okay, so I, I have a little bit more uh, still to say about Genoa City this week that I think won't fit into a 15 minute video. So I'm gonna break this little vlog up into two parts. I'm gonna call this the end of part one and I'm gonna be back with a part two in just a little bit. So check back and I'll have it posted. I'll see you then.